Hello! Check out what's new in MPS 2020.1. The tooltips language that some of you might know from the Embedder platform has been integrated into MPS. In order to allow tooltips for the require command in uh, the robot language, all we need to do is to adjust the editor definition slightly. So we need to create a new tooltip cell, which obviously is only available when we import the tooltips language. So you choose tooltip, now you insert the cell that should be normally visible, and then you specify the tooltip, which again is part of the editor definition. So what I can do is to create a constant cell with some tooltip message. Rebuild. And, well, then if I hover my mouse, I get a tooltip. Now, tooltip can obviously be more involved in that, so I can surround it with an indent collection and write something more meaningful. Again, rebuild, and uh, you know we should immediately see the effect of this. Here's another new thing. Uh, when you've got an error in editor definition, uh, MPS will now help you find the cause of the trouble. If I change the editor definition for for a while statement, for example here in the query for a new line, we'll throw an exception. So now the editor definition for while statement occasionally throws an exception. When that happens, the errors are listed in the messages view, and since the editor definition is broken, it can't be used, so instead the reflective editor is used to um, project the, the particular node on the screen. So you can see a reflective editor has been used here for the while statement and down here we've got errors. If I click on the error it will navigate to the piece of code that causes the editor to fail and you can also right click and analyze stack trace and you get, get clickable stack trace showing you where exactly the problem happens. If I click over here, click over here, I get to my throw statement that obviously causes the problem in this case. You probably know that collections can have separators defined, so that when you have a collection like here that lists all the routines that should be imported, they can be separated with a custom separator, a comma in this case. But sometimes, especially when you model languages that are closer to natural languages, you might want to provide different separators for di different positions in the collection. MPS now allows you to do that. So for this collection, I can go to the separator and in, instead of hard coding a comma separator, I can choose a query and then just detect if the next node, so the node that will be behind the separator I'm now returning, if it has no next sibling, then that's the last one in the collection. So I want to use a separator end. Otherwise I want to use comma. Notice the space in front of end. That's because I don't want end to be attached to the left node. I want it to be separated from, from both the left and the right node that it is separating. So back to here. And now see that we're using comma for all the nodes but the last one which is separated with end. The transformation and substitute menu has got a facelift. Now when you want to create a new transform or substitute menus, notice 
the options are slightly different than they used to be, the old options are deprecated. Now you can create new substitute menus, transformation menu, or contributions. You no longer distinguish between a named menu and a default menu in here. So you simply create a transformation menu, you choose the concept, and then you choose the type, default or named. If you choose default, it becomes the default menu for that concept. If you choose named, you provide a name and, and you're done. The next new feature I want to show is called Type Over Existing Text. It looks like a small feature, but it improves usability of the projectional editor a great deal. Look at this. Now I'll just be typing without any control space code completion or uh, you know any other assistance from the editor. I just type repeat five times enter. What happened is that although the editor knew as soon as I type repeat that I want to enter the repeat statement concept I could, uh, the editor allowed me to continue typing even though the characters are already present in the editor so when I press space and space is the next character right? the, the one that is to the right from the cursor position um, and since there's no uh, event associated with typing that character, the editor can just safely move the cursor to the right, pretending as if I type that character, space. And that continues on, so now pressing T moves me again to the right by one position. So as soon as I type whatever is to the right from the cursor, if it has no other effect on the editor, the editor just keeps moving to the right. Uh, another example here, turn right. I can type T U R N and I'm moving to the right. Now I decide to press Control Space and I choose whichever turn command I want to insert into the um, you know into my code. Another example, this time from base language, if I have a variable A ten pressing semicolon, you might have that habit of pressing semicolon, now it doesn't result in an error, it just accepts that character and moves the cursor to the right. This feature can be turned on and off in, in the settings, so in the editor, general, type over existing text, you can turn it on and turn it off as you wish. So with the feature turned off, pressing a semicolon results in an error here, Typing, typing turn results in an error here, although you can still go complete, so you know it's not that bad. And doing repeat five times results in, a, in an error again. So you have to constantly adjust your behavior to you know what the editor expects. So typing over existing text can help people who have the habit of typing more. I personally like this feature a lot, but the MPS gives you the option to choose whether you want it or not.